just love on him this morning. All right, that's right. It's still morning. Let's lift our hands. Just appreciate him. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We appreciate you and we honor you. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And let me hear the amen of a longing soul. Amen. We will indeed experience his glory. Amen. We'll experience his power. Amen. We'll experience his fire. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Keep your hands lifted up if you can. Lord, we love you. We appreciate your name. We are ready to be fed again of you this morning. Feed us with your word. Amen. Give us the drink of your word. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, we gain access into this book of mysteries. Amen. Sweet Holy Spirit, you know I can of my own self do nothing. To struggle without you is to struggle in vain. Holy Spirit, I rely upon you absolutely, completely, totally, and wholly upon you and your ministry. Yes, 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 yes. Interrupt, intercept, interject. Just do as you please in this service. Grant us speed through the word. For all you do, I vow to return every glory, every honor, and every power to you. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' precious name. Let me hear it. Thankful, amen. amen. Is this the second service at all? Let me hear it. Thankful, amen. amen. Now make a joyful noise. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Walk at least to seven people. Tell them you love them before you take your seat. To at least seven people. Tell them you love them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now give the Lord the biggest hand and the biggest shout of praise. Be seated. Amen. Before we get right into the word, all right, start making your way to your seat, please, if you can. Please make sure you have your five turnaround Sundays prayer card out right now. Please bring that out right now. And in case you don't have one, just lift up your hands. An official will place one in your hands. Perhaps you were not here last Sunday. Or you are coming to church for the first time. Why not? We want you to have this prayer card. And this is my one thing request. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right, let's quickly get that distributed on time. I want to give you just a moment to write that one thing you believe God for. One thing. One thing. My daughter said, from a son who could not meet the milestones, now has broken every barrier. Can now read, can now talk. Amen. There is absolutely nothing too hard for him to do. So write that one thing right now. And like I told them in the first service, the ATM service, be very specific. There was one I wrote on my prayer card for 21st November. Another one, one thing. You know, now we have two one things that you should have written. Another one for 28th November. Be very specific. Hannah said, I don't just want a child, I want a man child. So in case this is your first time in church, you have the opportunity to write two things. Don't go and feel everything the first day because you may come next week and say, I want a, one card per person, not that you'll be collecting every week. So if it's your first time in church, you write for 7 November, you write for 
14th November. Please don't write for 21st till we get there. Amen? Amen? Because there are things you are thinking about asking for that God will do them before you can write them. Amen. I'm not hearing that. Amen? Amen? If you are done, shout, I'm done. I'm done. What of the others? Please quickly, one thing, one thing. By now you should know what is that one thing. I want, you know, my immigration breakthrough. Don't just say immigration breakthrough. What immigration? Is it citizenship? Is it a green card? Is it asylum? <laughs> it's all breakthrough. <laughs> so be specific. Don't just say immigra immigration breakthrough. Which one do you want? <laughs> if you are done, shout, I'm done. Okay, you have to be done. Amen? Amen. We'll now use the whole message to write one thing. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving, part two. And in case you watch first service and say, I already know what is happening. This service is very different. Three objectives for the second service. Number one objective is the acid test for genuine thanksgiving. The acid test for genuine thanksgiving. How can you tell your thanksgiving is genuine? Your thanksgiving can be provoked by those around you yet not genuine. Number two objective for the second service, the 10.30 a.m. service, is let's examine the reasons for ingratitude. Why are many of us trapped as ingrates? And then objective number three, and then after this, we are, we are ready to praise him and to thank him for all he has done. Why do we give thanks? We'll look at the six we looked at in the first service and add six more to it, and then you go home with twelve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 100 and verse 1. I'd like us to read this together. We'll read from verse 1 all the way to the last verse there. Now, can we read together? One, two, go. Come on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Will you make a joyful noise right now? Make a joyful noise right now. We just read it. Now look at verse 2. Let's have that back on the screen. What does it say? Serve the Lord. Read with me please. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Verse 3. Let's go. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4, come on. Let's go. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Can we take verse 5 if you can? Come on. Do you have that for the Lord? Shout the loudest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now will somebody make that joyful noise? Come on! Right now to the Lord. Now you observe something here that before entering his gates, there is a joyful noise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. So before you talk about thanksgiving, something must precede it. Verse 1 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands. A joyful noise must precede a thankful heart. Before your thanksgiving is genuine, there must be noise proceeding. But the Lord opened my eyes to see this, that before a joyful noise is also a joyful heart. The noise that comes out of your mouth is a function of the melody that is taking place in your heart. Your heart, your heart, your heart. 
Many of us want to praise, but before praise is thanksgiving. Many of us want to thank, but before thank, thanksgiving is shouting. Many of us want to shout, but before shouting is a joyful heart. That's the process. So today, check your heart. Are you truly joyful in your heart? If you are truly joyful in your heart, it will find expression through your mouth. A joyful heart. I've not seen one thing that God has not done well. There is melody in my heart before the keyboard is gets on the keyboard. A joyful heart. A joyful heart. Then it will move to a joyful noise. Then from a joyful noise, it will move to a thankful lips. And then from a thankful lips, it will move to a singing mouth, a dancing leg, and everything flows that way. Before David could dance and take away his garments, 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 14, there must have been a joyful heart. A joyful heart is what will lead to joyful act. A joyful heart. That is the acid test. It begins from the heart. If you are here thinking God has cheated you, your thanksgiving is already corrupted. If you are here thinking God is too slow, if you are here thinking God is unfair, no matter the screaming that comes, no matter the jumping, no matter the handkerchief you wave, the thanksgiving, the praise is already corrupted. A joyful heart to a joyful noise to a grateful lips and then to a praiseful dance. I don't know about you, but you will agree that for the arrows that fly by day and by night that didn't touch you. <laughs> for the viruses that came and just went without your knowledge. For the strength in your body that you can't explain. Hey, for you being in your right mind. There are people who have lost their mind. More educated than you and me. More advanced than you and me. That you can wake up and see children around you. That you are still breathing in and out. The most expensive thing yet free. That's why I said let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The acid test. For genuine thanksgiving therefore we can say. It's a genuine heart. A genuine heart. Lord, I mean it. I'm not pretending. I'm not faking. I'm not, I'm not acting it. I mean it. I am grateful. There's nothing to complain about. That you can recognize that something is not yet working means your mind is still working. Because the one that has lost his mind cannot tell that anything is not working. I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful, oh Lord. I, 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 I. I am grateful, oh Lord, for all you have done for us. Hallelujah. I am grateful. Oh, lift your voice. Everybody, I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful. Oh, if you are truly grateful, let him know it. Come on. I am grateful.
for all you have done for me. Hallelujah. I am grateful. Take your seat. A grateful heart. Please be seated. A grateful heart. A grateful heart. Now, you like to go on this journey with me. What are the reasons for ingratitude? Number one is forgetfulness. We are in a generation that forgets so easily. Forgetfulness. In Psalms chapter 78, verse 11, God became angry because they forgot. I love that. They forgot. They forgot his works. They forgot his works. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 106, verse 21, they forgot. Not forgot. They forgot his works, his wonders, which he had wrought, the great things he had done for them in Egypt. If any of us complain, we should be slapped. Okay, what did you do to preserve yourself from the virus? Vaccine? Because with vaccine, you can still have it. They forgot his works. Many of us in, a, in our lifetime have never seen the kind of year 2020 was. Please hear me. Even if God does nothing else for us, he has tried. Let's not quickly forget what he has done. Do you know somehow the devil makes you minimize what God has done and maximizes what you are still expecting? That's why you need to take down a piece of paper and write what he has done this year for you. It has to be a conscious effort. You must remember, remember, if not, you will be found in the trap of forgetting. Number two reason for ingratitude is pride. Now that means you remember, but you don't think it's enough. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 15 to 17. <laughs> I love this. And I want us to read it together. Jeremiah chapter 13, 15 to 17. Can I have this please on the screen with speed? Hear ye. And give ear. Now let's read the next statement together. One, two, go. Come on, let's go. Be not, Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Now let's keep reading. Give glory to the Lord your God before he cause darkness. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while ye look for light, he turn it into a shadow of death. And make it gross darkness. But let's read verse 17. One, two, go. Come on, with life. But if you were not here, my soul shall weep in secret places for what? Your pride. And my eyes shall weep so and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. Pride, pride, pride. Is this why I should climb the altar and testify? Lord, I thought you would finish. Pride. Pride makes the devil take you on a ride. Pride. And the church is filled with many proud people. Someone say, I thank God for blessing me with a car. And then you are now trying to sniff and look around. Where is the car? And then you see the car and say, is that what we should be testifying about? 
There are people like that everywhere. Somebody looked at Bishop Oedipo some years ago and said, Oh, Brother David, I heard the Lord bless you with a car. He said, Oh, yes, a fantastic car. And he said, Did I hear it is a Volkswagen? He said, Yes, a fantastic Volkswagen. And the man raised his hand, he did like this. If that is a car, may I never ride one? Until a few years ago, the man was seen at a bus stop. Pride. God has given some of you a house or apartment. You think it is too small to dedicate. How can I bring the church to see that this is where I'm living? I'm waiting till he gives me a single family home. There is somebody hearing me who has been thinking of that. I can't bring my service unit to see this is where I live. What would they think of me with how I dress? <laughs> or with the car that I ride, would they ever imagine this is where I come out of? And God is saying, I bless you with that. It is suddenly too small to dedicate. You know, there are people waiting for big things. But big things never come. Because they never give God thanks for the small things. Pride. Number three reason for ingratitude is fear. Now, it, it sounds very simple. Some people cannot give God thanks because they are afraid of the reaction from the enemy's camp. Listen to me. If they know this is what God has done for me, ah, all hell will break loose. So is hell suddenly more powerful than heaven? Are demons suddenly more powerful than the almighty God? So he said, no, no, no. Don't testify. That kind of thing, nobody should know. Let them know. Now, in Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2, it says, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, to sing praise unto his name, O Most High. Right? Now, all of that, now, by verse 10 to 12, it talks about when that brings fresh oil upon a man, God will deal with their enemies. Amen. So the reason why some are not grateful is because they are fearful. They are fearful of the reaction. Have you ever heard people say that it's like every time I testify, I've even heard it in this church, this branch, and I laugh. It's like every time I testify, all hell breaks loose. Have you ever heard that kind of thing before? Stop that nonsense. All hell can break loose and succeed against a true thanksgiver. Says, anytime people know what God is doing, they start fighting me. So I don't want them to know what God is doing. Fear. Number four reason for ingratitude. Are you ready for this? Choice. That is, I don't want to give God thanks. It's, it's my body. It's my life. Thank him and praise him. No, I will not. Choice. You remember the scripture teaches us that I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. So if life and death is a choice, gratitude and ingratitude is a choice. Only you carry long face since January. Only you. Only you, everywhere you go. People are even tired of seeing your face. <laughs> Only you carrying long face as if God has cheated you. You are the only one that knows the policies of every government. <laughs> People are talking of supply chain that supply chain doesn't even affect. They are carrying it on their head. Supply chain, hey, hey, what will happen supply chain? What did you order? Nothing. <laughs> Those who are ordering are not bothered. Even Amazon, you didn't order. Then you are talking supply chain. People are ordering bigger things. They are smiling. You are the one talking supply chain. It's a choice. Are you ready for number five? Are you sure you are ready? Familiarity. Even in the natural, when you get too used to a man, even if he does good for you, you won't say thank you. That's how many are too used to God. 
So God opened blind eyes after 40 years. We are used to it in our church. There are people like that. Someone, the child couldn't speak, now has broken. Well, what is that? Familiarity. Never get to the point where you can't see what God is doing. He won't come and say, I am God doing this one for you. But learn to see his invisible hand. All right. Media, add this one because I didn't give it to you. Are you ready for number six? Reason for ingratitude is wickedness. That is, you are just wicked. That's, let's give glory to God. No, 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 no. I won't. Wickedness. Wickedness. But today, every one of us that has been a victim of ingratitude, today, thanksgiving becomes your new lifestyle. Yeah. Let me hear the loudest amen. amen. Please let that amen be very loud. So there you have six reasons for ingratitude. Now, why do we give thanks? Why do we give thanks? Very quickly, number one, it gives God delight. And that should be our delight, to give God delight. It gives God delight. Thanksgiving gives God delight. No wonder it was said about David that God didn't only love him, God liked him. When you learn to give God delight, God likes you. Likes you. It means you make him happy. He delights in you. Number two, why do we give God thanks? It is a debt we owe God. And you and I know, what do you do with debts? You pay them. I hope you don't pray them. You pay them. That's why there is time to pray and there is time to praise. You pay the debt you owe God. Luke chapter 17, verse 17 to 19. Where they not ten cleanse, we are denied. This one returned back to pay the debt. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13. He said, we are bound to give God thanks always for you. It is a debt we owe God. Number three, why do we give God thanks? It keeps the invisible hand of God at work in our lives. Because there is an invisible hand working the visible. It keeps the invisible hand of God at work in our lives. We shared all of that in the first service. Let's jump to number four. Why do we give thanks? Number four, it generates all-round increase. All-round increase. All-round increase. Lift up your hands. As you thank God today, in every area of your life, there shall be increase. Amen. Let me hear the loudest amen. amen. A stronger amen. amen. You can imagine a man increasing in anointing but not increasing in finances. Or a man increasing in finances but not increasing in health. Or a man increasing in all the above but failing in school. All around increase. Paul planted. Apollos watered. First Corinthians 3, 6. But God give her the increase. But the God of increase will not step in according to First Corinthians 4, 7 until we give him thanks. Number five. It keeps the good flowing. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. But Ephesians 5.20 says, giving thanks to God for all things. So if the good will keep flowing, then we must keep thanking him to see it flowing. Number six, why do we give thanks? It provokes supernatural multiplication. The Lord God of your fathers is out to make you and I a thousand times more. Deuteronomy 1 and verse 11. But before we are multiplied, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry, I will multiply them. They shall not be few, 
I also will glorify them. They shall not be small. John chapter 6, verse 6 to 12. When Jesus raised up five loaves, two fishes, he saw multiplication by thanksgiving. Do you know everything you need, you already have, it just lacks multiplication. Think about it. Oh, yes, I desire God to bless me my finances, but you have something. Something plus times great things equals everything. Come, think about it. If you have two, and what you need is ten, do you know you already have what you need? It just likes multiplication. So two times five equals ten. So wherever you are, or wherever you want to be, where you are is enough. When the multiplier God comes into play, you discover that where you are today, and where you want to be tomorrow, just has been waiting for what will multiply where you are today. And what multiplies it? Thanksgiving. Will you lift up your hands and shout with me, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Louder, please. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Number seven. Why do we give God thanks? Now, this is new for us from number seven to 12. It preserves the blessing. It preserves the blessing. It preserves the blessing. Malachi chapter two, verse one to three. We see there that if you want the preservative order of what heaven offers, we must give God thanks. If you're not late to how to give glory to my name, said the Lord, I will cause the blessing. I will make the blessing to spoil. You know, there are people who talk about what they used to be, what they used to have. I've even heard people talk about how God used to use them. What happened? It spoiled. It spoiled because there was ingratitude. Father, I thank you that anybody can even sit down and listen to me. I thank you because I'm communicating. I thank you because I'm making sense. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, because I even have something to eat. Somebody laughs at you and they say, when will you start driving? I thank God because my legs are working. Very soon. Very soon. Very soon. It preserves the blessing. Whatever God has done, whatever God is doing, needs to be preserved for it not to be turned to shame. Yes, sir. And thanksgiving is what preserves it. Number eight, why do we give God thanks? It perfects the blessing. I've observed this about God. God will never give you his best at first. Those who are just getting to know God must understand that. God will never give you his best at first. He will give you the good first. Waiting for your gratitude so he can turn the good to the great. So thanksgiving perfects our blessings. We find that in Luke chapter 11, verse 17 to 19. Jesus could make all of them whole. Why did he just heal them? He never gives his best at first. You and I even know, even in the natural, if all of us will be paid on the first of the month, for the entire month, many of you will call in sick. <laughs> Including the staff where I work, the staff in church, they will call in sick. But you can't call in sick because you have not yet been paid. So God says, take it first. This is 15th. What you do with the 15th will determine what you get on the 30th. Thanksgiving perfects the blessing. Number nine, why do we give God thanks? It releases fresh oil. Somebody shout with me, fresh oil. May the oil on your life and my life never go out. You know, anointing that becomes old ends up in annoyance. There are people who can clap for you today. If you are not growing, tomorrow they will stone you that. We have heard that before. Teach us something new. But you are not a candidate for fresh oil without thanksgiving. Psalm 92 verse 1 and 2 is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Sing praise unto his name almost high now. From verse 10 to 12, he will now anoint your head with fresh oil. Fresh oil. You need fresh oil for today's battles. Yes, sir. 
Can you imagine that we are still operating with 2018's anointing? And then 2019 came, then COVID, Koro, came. You must grow. You must what? Let me hear you must do what? You must grow. If I came with Abuja's anointing and it hasn't grown, how, how will I pastor in COVID? But you will not grow in unction without gratitude. Father, thank you. And now what happens when fresh oil comes? Ask your enemies. That's the answer. What happens when fresh oil comes? Ask your enemies. God begins to send warnings ahead to your enemy. Touch not my anointed. Man, that boy has grown. Touch him not. Touch her not. That girl has grown. Touch them not. That church is not the same. Fresh oil. But that comes by thanksgiving. Number 10. Why do we give God thanks? It provokes fulfillment of prophecies. Fulfillment of prophecies. I'd like to encourage you to listen to the first service teaching because this is what we call the wonder voltage. Everything God has said, plug thanksgiving to it and you will find out that it has no choice but to be fulfilled. You'll find that in Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. Number 11, why do we give God thanks? I love this. It secures divine presence. And you should know that the presence of God is most valuable to the believer. In fact, I like to say it this way. In the kingdom of God, divine presence is the greatest asset. When God is with a man, please leave the man alone. When God is with a woman, Please leave the woman alone. When God is with a boy, please leave him alone. The Bible says the sea saw him and fled. Jordan was driven back. And then we had to ask the sea, why did you run? The mountains, why did you move? I didn't know you had legs. He said, ah, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. How do we get into his presence? Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Psalm 100 verse 4, and into his courts with praise. So thanksgiving secures divine presence. And finally, number 12, are you blessed? Yes. Finally, number 12, thanksgiving guarantees supernatural victories. What do I call it? Let me hear you louder, please. Ask Jehoshaphat. At the battle of the kings. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22 down to 24. As he began to sing, to thank him and to praise him. The Lord set ambushment. Now hear me. It is not supernatural victory if you were the one fighting. Supernatural. I didn't say natural victory. That is God fighting and you watching. Isn't it amazing that you can be an observer in your own battle? That is, it is you God is fighting for and is fighting the enemy against you, but you are in the stand watching. Super natural victories. Therefore, only fools are in greats. Thanksgiving is a wonder mystery that can be effected at every time and at any time. I'd like us to quickly review because this is a classroom, then we'll go into practicals. What are the reasons for ingratitude? Number one, and you have forgotten. <laughs> so, you see, this is a test. Number one, forgetfulness, you've forgotten. Now, how will you remember to thank God? Wait. You see how God caught you? <laughs> Number one is forgetfulness, and then you forgot forgetfulness. Then how will you thank God? Raise your hand and say, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> I just did powerful teaching now. You forgot him. And the first point is what? Then you forgot. Then how will you go this week and thank God? You can't forget. 
You see how God just looks at us and says, if not for my mercy. No wonder he says, because of the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Some of you write powerful notes. After you get out and take lunch, especially junk food, you've forgotten. Number one is what? Louder. Number one is what? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Are they showing you on the screen? Number six. Okay. Why do we give God thanks? Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Most of you are not saying anything. You are just laughing. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten. Number eleven. Number twelve. Number 11. <laughs> you know, all of you remind me when I was in school. When they say two times table, I didn't know anything. So I used to like when we do it together. You just be doing like two times one, two times. Two. You only know the question, you don't know the stand on your feet. Most of you are like that. You are just. That's why I asked you number 11. You started laughing. <laughs> lift your hands and just thank him. Everybody, lift your hands. Appreciate the Lord for his faithfulness. Give him praise and give him glory. Somebody do that from the depth of your heart. Please, please, please. Do it from the depth of your heart. It's a depth we owe God. So let it come from the depth of your heart. That's right. That's right. Let it come from the depth of your heart. Let it come from the depth of your heart. Somebody do it right now. Do it right now from the depth of your heart. That's right. Do it right now. Right now. Right now. From the depth of your heart. Do it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now from the depth of your heart. Father, I am grateful. Father, I am thankful. Father, I am grateful. For your faithfulness, I cannot forget in a hurry. How you preserved my life. How you preserved my family. How you provided for me when it looked like there was no way out. How you have released fresh oil every single moment, every single season. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Somebody with a loud voice right now. Thank him from the depth of your heart. I thank you for unction. I thank you for anointing. I thank you for oil. Oh yes, I thank you for testimonies. I thank you for this church family. I thank you for one that stay in there. I thank you for the faith though. I thank you for October 24. Oh yes, I thank you for my children. I thank you for sound health. I thank you for supernatural intelligence. Oh Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my parents. I thank you for every relative. I thank you Lord, I thank you Lord, I thank you Lord. Come on, somebody thank him. I give you praise and I give you glory. Blessed be your name forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. None of us want to be forgetful. None of us want to be prideful. None of us want to be fearful. None of us want to make the wrong choice. None of us want to be too familiar with God. And none of us want to be wicked. Therefore, you will raise your hand with me and let's make this shout to heaven. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. Second service with your hands lifted up, shout it again. Now let's do it the loudest you can. Now take your five turnaround Sundays, one thing prayer card. And in the next one minute, I want you to pray over that item very specifically. Lord, this is my 14th November one thing. And I'm asking God that everybody that prays this from the depth of their heart is coming back next Sunday to share their one thing testimony. Therefore, lift up your voice right now. This is between you and your father. What is that one thing? Be very, very specific about it. What is that one thing you desire?
Lift up your voice right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you have 30 seconds. Pray right now. If you really desire it, because we're about to praise right now. Pray right now. We're about to praise right now. Pray 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 right now. Zoris Katash. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Now, lift up that prayer card to heaven right now. How many know that in this church, God hears our prayers? Now, with that one thing lifted up, by 21st November, this one thing is turned into a one thing testimony. Whatever you have written down on your one thing prayer request card, you are sharing the testimony this coming Sunday. For some of you, you wrote 28 November. God will daze you this week. Amen. Whatever your heart desires, ah, I decree the answers are released in your direction. Amen. Every barrier between you and the fulfillment of that one thing, by your praise and thanksgiving, by my praise and thanksgiving today, those barriers are cleared of the way. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And someone that believes before this season is over, you will publicly testify of your one thing. Shout the loudest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wave it to heaven right now and just glorify the Lord. He has answered. He's delivered. Say with me, there is nothing too hard for him. Say with me, there is nothing too hard for you, Jesus. It is done. And someone that believes that one thing has returned as a testimony, shout the loudest, amen. amen. One thing God desires from every one of us today is our heart. He said, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. In my study of the scriptures, as I began to read what happened from David to Solomon, to Jeroboam, to Rehoboam, I discovered one thing that was missing was their heart. God kept referring back to David. Why are you not serving me like David, my servant, served me with all his heart? Heart, 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 heart. Solomon began on the, wrong, the right path. He loved God with all his heart. But before we knew it, Solomon loved many strange women. And they took his heart from God. There are people in church, but their heart is no more with God. And then Jeroboam, Rehoboam, their heart far from him. In fact, when David was going to go, he told Solomon, this is the secret, your heart. Your heart your heart we have asked god for one thing god is asking all of us here for one thing what is that one thing the heart god can make of any man as a wonder on the earth if he has his heart the question therefore to you and i does god have your heart all heads bowed and all eyes closed lord i want to give you my heart 
I'm tired of running this race alone. Forgive me my sins. Wash me in your blood. Give me a new chance at living my life for you. These are things that you are saying in your heart. Lord, I am even in church, but I'm not sure I'm in touch. I do.